Hello, so this video we're going to look at using trigonometric sum and difference identities. Right. So let's suppose you're asked the question, find sine of the difference of two angles x and y. Then they give you some information about sine x and cosine y. Okay. Now what we want to do is use the trigonometric identity for sine the difference of two angles. So here are your sum and difference identities. So you look under the difference identities because you have a minus sign. And then for the sign, it's this top one. So sine of x minus y, right, is x being the first angle, y being the second angle. It's sine of the first, cosine of the second, minus cosine of the first, sine of the second angle. All right? So here we go. This is what we're finding. And essentially what we want to do, I want you to just kind of notice that here you're taking the sine of two angles, right? The input has two angles in it. And here you have the sine of one angle, the cosine of one angle, and so on and so forth. So what we want to do is use this information they gave us to go ahead and find out the other angles that are missing. So sine of x, if I look at this, this is really a product and then a difference and a product. I want to fill this in like that. And I can already fill in two of them. Sine of x is negative two-sevenths. They give it to me. So I can already put two-sevenths in there. And cosine of y is negative five-ninths. I can already put that in there. So I need to find these two pieces that are remaining using this information that's given. Okay. Now, before we start out, I want to make the point that when they write something like sine of x equals negative two-sevenths. X here is just an angle. The input to any trig function is an angle. I could think of it as sine of theta equals negative two-sevenths. Okay? And so in that sense, what I'm saying is I have an angle, and we're told that angle is in quadrant three. So I have an angle in quadrant three somewhere. And then, oh, looks like we're going to have a little bit of help from my cat. <laughs> All right, so I have an angle in that quadrant, and then I drop to the x-axis, right? And from there, this is my reference angle, theta, all right? So just be careful not to confuse this x, which is a rotation, with the x, which is horizontal movement, okay? If it's the input to a trig function, you know it has to be an angle. So by context, you know that. All right. Um, so essentially what we're going to do is build a right triangle, and what we're going to say is the definition for the sine of any, of any angle when it's in standard position is y over r, right? So that allows you to keep these pages over here, to say that this is y over r is negative two sevenths. Now, it's obvious r is seven, so we can put that in here for the radius, and the y, oh, and the, is two, it's actually going to be negative. We can see in quadrant two, in quadrant three, uh, y is always negative. But also we know that r is always positive because r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Since these two, since x squared is going to have to be positive, y squared is going to be, have to be positive. When you square a number, it's always positive. You're adding two positive numbers and taking a square root. r is always positive. So if there's a negative sign, it has to go with whatever's in the numerator. Now, can we find x? Well, sure, right? We can use the Pythagorean theorem. Right? So we can say x squared plus negative 2 squared is 7 squared. right? So x squared plus 4 equals 49. And so x squared equals subtract 4 from both sides, 45. Now we're going to take the square root. right? So the absolute value of x is the square root of 45. All right. So now x is plus or minus square root of 45. But we know x is negative because we're in quadrant 3. So x is negative square root of 45 because x is in quadrant 3. And now let's do a little bit of an aside here. When we look at 45, right, and we want to say, well, let's see if there's anything that can come out of the, the um, square root. So this is 9 times 5, right? And this is 3 times 3. So 45 is 3 times 3 times 5. So this can come out under the square root, so I'll have negative 3 square root of 5. Okay. 
So now I did all this work, basically, so that I could find the piece that's missing here in terms of angle x, right? I'm calling it theta, but really it's x. So I should say here angle x. And now I want to find the cosine of that angle x using this triangle. So we did all this work exactly for this reason. So now I can say cosine of this angle x is x over r, because that's the definition of the cosine of an angle in standard position. So x now I know is negative 3 square root of 5. So this is negative 3 square root of 5 over r is 7. Okay. So now that allows me to go ahead and fill in now this piece right here. Negative 3 square root of 5 over 7. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with the information that was given about um, sine of y. Right? So let's take a look. Why don't you, but let me show you what the information was again, just to remind you. Cosine of y is negative 5 ninths. So uh, pause the video and see. go ahead and make a construct a right triangle and see if you can find what sine of y will be. Okay. So here then we will continue. And given that cosine of y is negative 5 ninths, and I'm told that y is in quadrant 2. Okay. So again, if it helps me out, I can think of it as cosine of an angle is negative 5 ninths. But it's actually better if you think of it in terms of y. So I'm going to actually do this in terms of y. So I'm going to give myself a nice picture. I have some angle here in quadrant 2. Right? And then when I drop to the x-axis, this is theta or really y, because that's the way the problem is being asked. Now I know by definition cosine of an, cosine of an, an angle is x over r. So remember, r must be 9, and x is negative 5. So we want to know what is y. Okay. So now we can use the Pythagorean theorem again. And we'd have negative 5 here squared plus y squared is 9 squared. right? So we have 25 plus y squared equals 81. And so subtracting 25, right? y squared is 56. Take the square root of both sides. Uh, absolute value of uh, y is square root of 56. Okay. Um, so now removing the absolute value, I have plus or minus square root of 56. Now because we're in quadrant 2, we know y is positive. So y is positive square root of 56. And remember we can do this where we prime factor 56. Uh, 2 times 28, and 4 times 7, 2 times 2. So 56 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 7, right? So we can pull that out and say that is now 2 square root of 14. 2 times 7 is 14. All right, so now what we have is y is 2 square root of 14, and it is positive. Okay. And again, we did all of this work so that we could fill in the piece that's missing here is sine of y. So let's go ahead and find that out based on this definition, and meaning the definition that we built the right triangle. So sine of the angle y is y over r, and now we found y, which is 2 square root of 14, over r, which is 9, and that is what I'm going to get to put in here, the missing piece. All right, so we're getting closer. <laughs> okay, so now what we have is all of this, and we need to now just simplify. All right, so now let's take a look. Well, both of them have the same denominator. 7 times 9 is 63. So this is going to be something over 63, and this is going to be something over 63. And of course, we could put it all over 63. We have here. A negative times a negative is going to be a positive, so 2 times 5 is 10. And here we have a negative times a negative times a positive, so that's going to give me a positive. And what I have is 3 times 2 is 6, and again the 7 times 9 is 63. And here, remember the prime factorization, 5 is already prime, to prime factor 14 you have 2 and 7, so there's nothing, we don't have two fives, two twos, or two sevens. 
So we can just multiply 5 times uh, 14 and then say we have the square root of 70. Now your answer could be left this way, or you could say 10 plus 6 square root of 70 over 63, right? And here, because you have a common factor of 2, you can factor it out. It won't do you much good because you don't have a factor of 2 in 63, but if you did, you would definitely want to factor this out and say 5 plus 3 square root of 70 over 63. And then here, if 63 had been a multiple of 2, you would have been able to cancel out that 2. But it looks like this is our final answer, and that's it. Thanks for listening.